OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. All right, well, good afternoon, everybody. It's great to be here with you. Um, I'm Virginia Burroughs here with Will Nederson at Teston Adult School, um, and we're here to share our journey or steps through DLAC. So we want to start with this quote from Steve Jobs, and I think it's a, a great quote here. I think this is the start of something really big. Sometimes the first step is the hardest one, and we've just taken it. I think that's what we feel like right now in our journey of DLAC over the two years, is we're, we're creating something big. And, and the step might have been hard as we go through ups and downs, and you'll hear that today, but it, it, it started because we took that mm -hmm. first step. So we're really excited about that. Um, for those of you who don't know, Tustin Adult School is located in uh, mid-county, Orange County. Um, we're part of the Tustin Unified School District. And when we like to say we're about 20 minutes south of Disneyland, in case you're aware of that place. Let's see if this will cooperate. <laughs> okay, so there here we is. go. We're rolling people, you know, that's <laughs> technology. So the makeup of our school, our, our small little school has right now currently 854 students. As you compare it to last year, we've definitely grown from the 621 prior. But I'll just be honest with you, two years ago, we lost and went to only 300, about 352 students. So we're celebrating the growth, but I'll be reflective with you. Pre-COVID, we were at 1,800 students. So we've got a way to grow still. So. But our primary focus in our program is ESL. That's our, our bread and butter in one sense. It's our largest population of students enrolled with us. We do uh, citizenship preparation, adult basic education in mathematics and reading. And then we have our adult high school diploma and equivalency. I love this fact. We service the 18 year old, but our oldest ESL learner is 81 years old. Wow. That, that is just great to know that they're coming and wanting to still engage in English. That beginning literacy class, I could keep talking, but I'll be quiet. And in our school represented, we have uh, 20 other languages languages besides English English that are represented. Um, because we're a small school, um, we have 30 part-time teachers, which is one of our challenges. Um, we have one part-time counselor, um, seven classified staff who help glue everything together. Um, our classes are both online and in person, and we offer instruction mornings, evenings, and Saturdays. So a little bit about us now that we've been talking. Again, I'm Will Nederson. I'm the coordinator for our program. We don't have a direct principal, but I'm the administrator that oversees our program. So my title is coordinator. Uh, I joined Tustin Adult School in the 18-19 school year. So had a year under my belt before COVID and everything hit to try and understand. My background prior to that, though, is elementary education in the same district. Um, I, I'm going to add the reason that this is important is because I helped the school district pass a bond measure that was technology-based for the K-12 to bring technology to everyone. So that was something coming into the adult ed world. I'll bring a little bit more into that background. I'm Virginia Burroughs. Um, I'm currently the instructional coach for our ESL program. Um, I began an adult ed way back in 1988 when I took a part-time job as a bilingual instructional assistant and I never looked back because I love adult education. And she's kindly being shy, but she was the one after flexibility that helped reopen Tustin Adult School and took that step back to give me the opportunity. So I, I love that. Our team as well as we have supporting team members. Uh, Virginia came on new this year for year two. My first year was with Laura Flores Miranda who had better opportunities. So we celebrate that, but she's still with the school in other ways. And then we've worked uh, with our uh, leadership team that consists also of our school counselor and our adult ABE or lead ABE ASC teacher. Um, so. Uh, Lillian Tran Chow and Stacey Sepkik. So we just want to acknowledge them in that process. Great. Um, we like this quote, the first step towards success is taken when you refuse to be a captive of the environment in which you first find yourself. We were at a place where we were kind of marching in place but not moving ahead a whole lot. So DLAC really presented that opportunity for us to really try something new. So we're going to call it the nudge is what DLAC did. You know, we just became a WEO agency. And so all of a sudden these things opened and the introduction to OTAN was one of them and an email came through that said, apply for DLAC. <laughs> well, uh, it, let me give you a little background about Tustin Adult School. Reopening, we were paper pencil based, you know, talking about my part-time teachers, a lot of them retired, paper and pencil is a safe place to be. The technology, if you were gonna talk about what's available to our staff and students, 
It was a laptop, a document camera, and a projector. So thank you for that investment. <laughs> but that's what was there for our students. We might have had a, one computer lab, but not a lot of te technology for our students. And then our textbook didn't have that, that electronic component that we were using, so definitely heavy paper pencil. So Laura came to me and said, hey, Will, we should really apply for this DLAC thing. Yeah, OK, and I'm an administrator trying to do it all. But she's like, no, Will. So I appreciate her nudge to that. And our focus on the initial application was to integrate digital literacy skills into our teacher's instruction. As you heard, that's where our base was. Uh, then Basically, push. the nudge became a big push and shove because this little thing called coronavirus happened. So we were starting that journey. And then all of a sudden, as with all of you, we ended up trying to figure out how in the heck do we do this anymore. So our first step was to go to asynchronous classes um, or independent study. And then that next fall, um, we uh, got our teachers on board with Google Meet and Zoom and, and started that journey. And it, it wasn't pretty and it wasn't easy, but that, those were our first steps. But it was amazing. I have to tell you to think of a team who wasn't looking at technology. We, we did a lot of amazing things. And part of it was the interaction here. This image speaks to a lot to DLAC, if I can just put it this way. Sometimes when you see this, you think of the, time, the team that's standing at the top ready to pull the next person. I want to flip that view for you. And I want you to see us as Tustin at all school, the ones trying to climb and reach out because we knew that we wanted to succeed and achieve higher for our students. And part of that was digital integration. The DLAC team, so Pina, Netta, sorry for that, Dr. Porter, <laughs> Susan, it's that team that could reach up and support us and pull us in moving forward. So again, as it says here, the first steps towards getting somewhere is to decide what you are not going to stay where you are. We weren't gonna stay. We, we knew that we wanted to make a difference. And I think that's the important piece. So Ideal 101 came into our existence. And with that, as you all know, it was a, a, a lens that really changed the focus of what are we gonna look at? And things that we hadn't thought about, recruitment, about orienting individuals. What is distance learning really gonna be when you don't have distance learning? And all of a sudden you go to a, a online component that you know nothing about, it, a lot of those pieces. So we appreciate those components that made us think about. And then being able to, I know it was work for us, those of us that have this journey understand it, to fill out the information to be reflective, but to then get the feedback from the teams. I, I'm sorry, I'm looking at all of you in here, the feedback that you talked about, the feedback, I'm gonna call out Garden Grove in our, our team meeting with Susan as well. Destiny, giving her insight and her questions too. I think we appreciate it because it really gave it a different focus. So in that year and looking back at what we did at year one, you heard me say it was a laptop, document camera, and a projector that typically was technology at our school. We invested in purchasing Surface Pros. That was our district's uh, device. We had about 60 Surface Pros come on so we could lend them out to our high school side of the house or an ESL student who didn't have accessibility. Teachers also got Surface Pros, and then we ordered 40 iPads to try and bring in, because we were able to, the, the second half of the year, bring in students in a limited number quantity, so trying to bring that technology. And then the inspiration from you, we understood that social media, we needed to get the word out. So we had a Facebook account that was stagnant, but looking at bringing in a Twitter account, uh, Instagram account. Now, if you try and look us up at, at Huston Adult School, um, we're still learning about it, if I can put it that way, or keeping up with it, finding the managing it pieces, but it's that communication that's so important. We also, hearing about orientation and wanting to give a clear picture for our students of what they should expect from us, created an orientation video. And then from Ideal 101, the screener, you know, what, what digital capabilities do you have? And asking, uh, we created a four question screener. Can you send an email? Do you know how to navigate the website? Can you um, type? Th those components and it gave us a quick understanding of what our students had as they were coming in and registering they're answering this quick screener for us with that it, we ended year one with our our, our plan you know wh where was our focus and the five focus areas technology access for learners and staff we knew that we need to invest in more technology but we also needed to invest in getting into the hands of individuals so we purchased more devices in those pieces recruitment uh, mailing postcards. I know that sounds old fashioned as we're talking about digital literacy, but sometimes you need that, right? To say, oh, come in to us, the, the, the Instagram and those pieces. Screening and orientation is a big piece that we've set this process. Our classified staff now understand you don't just come in to take a test with us. You're coming in, we're gonna introduce, show a video. So really brought this, the classified staff on board. Online registration was huge for us because we could start saying, oh, who are we missing that comes and fills out a registration form how can we follow up? So that wasn't even our teaching staff, but our, our classified staff. 
And then professional development and staff support, so how we built for year two. I know Virginia will get more into that. And then looking at instruction and assessment, you heard me talk about paper and pencil. I can proudly say now this year, I can count the number of paper pencil tests we've given on my hand because we went e-testing and we took the, the steps. So those are big for us. So to those of you that are larger, please understand it's big for us. All right, um, I jumped in in year two um, and the things that stood out for me from this work was um, the triple E framework because it really informed us of the components that matter for digital resources. It was very helpful when we looked at building our rubric about what we should be considering. Um, that was a, a great exercise for us. Um, we had um, Melinda come and do a whole um, professional development. She didn't come, she came virtually. Um, the Google Suite, uh, which helped our district as a Google district, but the adult school had never gotten in on any of that training. So it was our turn and that was very helpful. It was kind of the first step for most of our teachers for getting into um, like a, a digital suite of tools. Um, the sessions, um, I love Dr. Porter's things on the leadership aspects, the, um, how we perceive ourselves as a cultural entity, how our community sees us. Um, having difficult conversations with faculty and staff who weren't quite moving into those places as quickly or as, as seamlessly as that we had hoped. Um, and then the integration of technology, we actually we tried something and ended up having to pivot it a little bit. So that was good learning for us. Um, what we accomplished, um, we developed onboarding workshops that we developed in terms of being offered before instruction started in basic email, understanding and being comfortable with an online platform, as well as a new curriculum which we started, which we did Burlington English. Um, for professional development, um, we tried to really bring what Melinda had taught us into teachers' hands in smaller pieces at that point so that they could understand how to make and use a Google form with students and an iPad or um, how to do a QR code to make that another way a students could access content. Um, and then finally, our rubric. Um, the rubric we developed, we applied to USA Learns, specifically the citizenship um, curriculum, because our citizenship people didn't really have a lot of uh, digital aspects to their curriculum, and we know that, that that matters maybe even more to them. So um, that's something where we did an application to that. Um, sometimes you have to take a half step back to take a step forward. We've had to remember that, that half step back is, back is important. So we're going to call it missteps, but really we look at it and we've tried to frame it as a change of course to move forward. Part of that onboarding, we celebrate that we did it, we piloted it, but I'm going to be honest with you, enrollment was low, attendance was even lower, we attempted it twice and even got worse results. <laughs> So we know that there's a change in that. With that, we've looked that we would want to bring in a team that's going to go into actual classrooms because we learn from our teachers as well. Teach us all together so we all know together how to work and function. So that's one of our plans is taking a coach, myself, and another teacher to go in and support. And then professional development. Uh, using Google Forms to ask our teachers in survey, they shared with us we need more time to think. So allowing a, a time of collaboration where we are quiet and they can exchange ideas together and reflect on what we've just learned together or what we've learned in the past to refine our practice, it, it's huge and it's important. So that's part of what we're looking to move forward with. Challenge is still, this slide is the same one. Part-time staff is always gonna be a challenge for us. <laughs> Funding for professional development and for technology, I'd love to get a technology piece into every one of my adults' hands that comes through our door so that way they can touch it. Because sometimes touching it breaks that fear of even working with technology. Mm -hmm. And being able to take that first step and be risk takers is huge. If we want them to be innovators, creators, they have to touch the device first. Mm -hmm. And then enrollment, you heard me say, we're, we're still behind on that. We want to build that. And we close with this. I just want to read this quote to you. A leader is someone who steps back from the entire system and tries to build a more collaborative, more innovative system that will work over the long term. DLAC, uh, Notan, thank you for taking us on to build us as leaders. And we hope that we can build leadership at our own school so they can be collaborators and innovators as well. So we know there's more future work to do, but thank you very much.